Good afternoon, everyone. Here is an old battery which I made not so long ago. Like anyone, after an all-you-can-eat at Taco Bell, this thing is pretty destroyed. It's hardly holding itself together. I made it by reverse engineering a car battery. So you can see there's a little bit of liquid inside of it. There's copper plates, there's aluminum plates. It's basically the same thing. As you can see, if I grab a voltmeter and hook it up to the battery, and hope it doesn't break. Oh, this is gonna take me quite a while to reattach the wire, so I'll just skip to that time. If I get a voltmeter and hook it up to the battery, you can see that there is a little bit of voltage being generated. But yet again, this thing is very destroyed right now. So I decided I will be making a new one today and teaching you all how to make it in the process. That's right, on today's weekly episode of Mixing Things Together and hopefully you don't poison me or blow up, I will be teaching you how to make a battery out of a piece of copper piping, a bottle cork, and a screw. To start the process off, you will need an average size segment of copper piping. This thing is roughly two inches in size. Uh, so yeah, roughly average. This thing just needs to be slightly bigger than the screw which you're gonna use. And the bigger the better in this case. As the segment isn't too big, you can rip it out of your wall. There's a lot in there. Enough for the copper pipe population to reproduce and heal after a month or two. Uh, the bigger you make it, the less resistance the battery itself will have. Uh, yes, a battery can have resistance. The bigger you make it, the less the resistance will be of the battery. And therefore, the higher the current will be. This method I came up with during French class. I tried to simplify it as much as I could. So what this method consists of is getting a copper pipe and putting a galvanized zinc coated screw inside of it, like this kind of, and then pouring a type of liquid inside of it and the electrolytic process will begin running. So I cut the cork into a piece which looks like this. It's much more small and it's the size of this pipe right now. Except so uh, now I will put this inside of the pipe and hope it's as airtight as possible. After which, I will get the screw and screw it in. So I put the screw inside, as you can see, it kind of looks like a battery right now. Uh, it's an important feature to have the screw not touch the walls like it did over here, because that would just cause a short circuit and mess the whole thing up. Now as airtight as it was before, I would recommend you hot glue it, just so there is simply no way any water can get out of here after it's poured in. The screw which you're gonna use for this needs to be galvanized, meaning it needs to be coated with a thin layer of zinc for this to work to its fullest potential. Now for the battery acid, I would not recommend using something exactly stable. Something that does not want to be alive. In terms of household items, I would recommend using a bottle of bleach for this. Bleach, sodium hypochlorite. When a gas, it decays at room temperature pretty fast, so it's the ideal candidate. I found experimentally, it's 1.6 times better than water for this. If we get into science-y things, there's an optimal concentration for this, blah, blah, blah. But that would involve calculating the distance between the anode and the cathode, and the surface area of each of them, and I am not calculating the surface area of a screw. So we pour it in and hope it does not react with anything. I poured a little bit too now much. Now I would not recommend pouring too much in as that would make the other piece of the cork very convenient to attach. So uh, we have uh, the bleach still inside, uh, we put the other piece, which is cut roughly in the same fashion except without the hole at the top. We put it in and we press it down as hard as we can. Try to limit the amount of liquid which can escape. Uh, I will have to hot glue the rest of this part. So here is the finished result. As you can see, it kind of looks like a normal battery which they sell at the store. On the diagram right over here, you can see that normal battery has a zinc shell. And with the cathode inside of it. This battery is completely the opposite. This battery has a copper shell and the anode inside of it. Meaning, so on this battery, this would be the plus, and this side would be the minus. On this battery, this would be the minus, and everything else, the copper, would be the plus. 
In terms of uh, electrolytes, bleach is a good household go-to. However, if you have superior acid, do you use it? So if we were to test out the voltage of this battery right now, you can see that it's roughly 0 0.90, 0 0.91 volts, uh, nearly a volt. So for a garage battery, it goes pretty smooth. However, you know what's not smooth? The fact that over 97% of you guys are not subscribed. So go, 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 subscribe if you like this content and want to see it next week. Right then, that's all for this week. Be seeing you. Peace.